All right, I am going to make the judgment call and say that this is the halfway point of my range test. And I'm going to spin the boat around. I've got, apparently, 81% left on, I'm pretty sure both packs, to be honest. Yeah, pretty much. And uh, that'll get me back with a little bit to go. But uh, as we know with batteries, the longer you use them, uh, right near the tail end, they can drop off real fast. Um, lithiums will take you all the way to the end and then just suddenly drop off. Whereas leads, they, they start um, dropping off, uh, I would say probably about 60% of the way in and then they start really exponentially dropping off. So we'll see how far we get. I might need a tow. <laughs> but uh, generator would be nice right now. That's all I can say. And uh, not only to give me a bit of a charge, but uh, I could throw a heater on because I think it's about, I don't know, two degrees Celsius right now. <laughs> All right, 32.5, I'm uh, hypo hypothermic. <laughs> so let's get into this. Obviously I made it home without uh, any real issue. The only thing I did was misjudge um, how quick that sun was gonna go down and how cold it was gonna get. So it was a very crispy, chilly ride back. And also with the overcast sky, when the sun went down, it was pretty much pitch, pitch black um, when I got into the marina. And uh, yeah, it was a bit of an event trying to find my spot. But uh, nonetheless, here I am safe and sound. Just highlights the fact that I need to purchase a uh, spotlight and um, that'll probably be my next install and review video. So uh, keep an eye out for that one. All right, range. So what did I learn? Okay, so I'll tell you flat out, um, hands down, 72 volt upgrade is totally worth it. 100% no regrets. Okay, why am I telling you this? Well, it's pretty simple. At 48 volts, when I wanted to do four knots, I had to pull 40 amps per side out of the pack. Um, at uh, 72 volts, I'm actually only having to pull 20 to 21 amps uh, per side. That's a massive efficiency improvement right there, okay? Now, when you get into uh, the range, well, uh, the reason why I chose four knots as uh, sort of a benchmark to test it at, at least for the initial test, um, is just simply because the, you know, anything below uh, four knots is actually almost unbearable unless you're fishing all day. Like say you're fishing for salmon, which will be like, you know, one to like two and a half, possibly three knots. Um, if you're not fishing, going under four knots is honestly just, it's unbearable. And uh, so I, I use that as the, as a base and um, it was a perfect day for it, right? It was uh, high tide, slack tide, light variable winds and, you know, uh, light uh, variable currents if you, uh, if you um, are wondering. So um, when I got out to the uh, seven mile mark, the reason why I stopped the boat there was just simply because, okay, uh, there's really nowhere beyond that point. If I keep pushing farther and I can't make it back, um, there's nowhere in that area that I could have, uh, even drifted to, to get, uh, shore power. Okay. So, um, just keeping a sort of safety in mind and the third, a third, a third rule, I thought, okay, seven nautical miles. I feel comfortable out here. I've got 80% of uh, my charge left on the batteries, but I also know these batteries are old and I also know how LEDs work, right? So with lithiums, you can take them like all the way, the batteries will perform um, exactly how they're meant to perform uh, up until about 80, 90% and then they'll just drop off like uh, flat. But with uh, LEDs, uh, you can kind of get tricked a little bit because you think they're performing uh, the same level all the way, but they're not. The longer you uh, draw from them, and if you increase the amp draw from them, uh, they just exponentially get worse uh, faster, right? So even though I was gonna keep everything set at 20 amps, I knew that you know when I was gonna get into like the three hour mark, that things are gonna really start dipping off quick, right? So that's just um, how you have to, you just have to accept that if you're running on LEDs, all right? Um, 
All right, so got out there, uh, you know, turn the boat off, uh, make some tea, look at the wildlife. It's kind of a really nice area just to kind of hang out and uh, then shot the video and puttered back home. Now, um, this is exactly, so what's the end result? The end result is that I got uh, comfortably 14 nautical miles out of 14 and change, okay, with reserve to go. Now, again, these are old batteries, so I didn't really want to push it too much farther than that. And this is my whole point, is that 14 miles just simply is not enough. It's okay for a weekender if you just kind of, if you got a favorite spot that you always want to go to, like a favorite couple spots within that 14 mile radius or seven mile radius because you got to get back home, right? Or if you can get to another marina that's uh, um, 14 miles away. So like, for example, I can go uh, from the marina that I stay to, to a downtown um, uh, port, and I can do that comfortably on a single charge. Now, um, but if I want to go anywhere outside of that, you know, now you can see why I say a generator is absolutely a necessity. And I think this kind of uh, turns a few people off because I was told that I was being a bit of a sellout uh, by promoting fossil fuels or going back to fossil fuels or something like that. And let's just get this, uh, let's just get it out, okay? Here's the deal. Fossil fuels got us to where we are today, and it's going to be fossil fuels that get us um, into the next uh, paradigm, whatever that looks like. Now, renewable, it's not renewable energies versus fossil fuels. It takes fossil fuels to, to make renewable energies. So you have to like get your head, wrap, head wrapped around it. It's not an us and them thing or this world and that world. It takes fossil fuels to make renewable energies, okay? Batteries, lithium or lead, solar panels, all that stuff. Everything in your whole world, your paradigm from coffee cups, uh, underwear, toilet paper, uh, paper clips, your cell phone, whatever you can think of, fossil fuels played a role. So you've got to like let that, that argument go in your head. It's not worth having and you'll just end up an angry person. <laughs> okay, so here's the deal. This is when I say I'm I'm switch I, I would need a diesel generator, you might be misunderstanding what I'm talking about. I think some people think that I'm I'm talking about making it a diesel hybrid in the sense that I would put a diesel engine back in the build, then have the electric motor and then the prop, right? So I would run off the electric motor for a period of time and then I would engage the clutch and now I've got a diesel engine pushing and basically I'm just running diesel for the rest of the way. That's not what I'm going after, okay? Lots of people have done that and I have no problem with that. It's just not what I wanna do. I love being underway when it's quiet and no exhaust. That is like one of my number one things. I, I've i had um, just a little suitcase generators on there. I had like a Champion 3000 watt on there one time and fired it up. It was terrible. Like I just wanted to chuck it overboard, right? You get so used to the quietness of uh, puttering around an electric boat. The second you turn on any type of engine, it's very, very invasive in my opinion, right? So here's the deal. The reason why I would get a generator and why I want an AC generator, because uh, that's also, um, that's been brought up a couple times as well, is because I don't want to run the generator unless I absolutely have to while I'm underway. I only want to run it if I'm on the hook or at a dock or marina where there's no available shore power, okay? So it's kind of like my get out of jail card. And if I want to put a heater on, it would be nice to uh, you know fire up the gen and plug in a heater and stay warm. Cause I'm telling you yesterday I could have used it, <laughs> all right? So that's my thinking. Does it mean that um, I'm limited to 14 uh, nautical miles uh, with lead acids? Well, it depends on your battery pack, right? So here's the deal. I'm gonna probably purchase batteries before I get a generator. I was just talking to the guys at Surrep. They have an L16 battery. And for anybody who knows anything about off-grid batteries, L16 are the six volt, big, tall batteries. You can get them in various amp hours, but I'm looking at the 445 amp hour um, battery. So they're not cheap, but they're very well made. It's a Canadian company and I want to support local business. Um, so I figure, you know what? 
Um, my batteries are near the end of the road. I still got some life in them, but it's, it's, you know, it's, it's very, um, it, they could very easily just fail. Like, you know, they're just, I've, I've used them quite a lot and, um, I'm surprised how well they're doing, but they can really just give out at any moment. Right. So I've got to start thinking about this next big purchase. Do I, you know, buy like a small um, generator, like for 10 grand or something like that, like a used one or whatever. Well, yeah, that is on the menu. But um, what I really need first is, because even if I get the generator and then my batteries are pooched, um, I'm only going to have a generator and I won't be able to go anywhere because the generator is only really going to be for recharging and AC panel stuff. All right. So the Surrettes, um, if I pick up uh, Surrettes, in the near future here that'll give me 440 amp hours that'll get me double the distance uh pretty much now you always got to think about conditions and stuff like that let's just call it like if it was a day like yesterday let's say i could go 28 miles 28 miles um you know under electric propulsion totally fine i can get uh to a whole lot more places than i can with 14. all right so there's the range question answered um and also a response to the uh, the whole diesel hybrid setup thing, right? I hope it kind of makes sense to everybody, um, you know, and I think I'm going to leave it at that. And uh, yeah, we'll chat later.